What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to use the extension Clothworks as well as how to use objects as pins for that cloth in order to create complex shapes inside of Clothworks. So today's video is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon. Patreon is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. One of the perks of supporting the show on Patreon is that you get to vote on the extension that I cover every week. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to support the show, maybe vote on the extension that I cover every week, make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so one of the things I haven't really talked about on this channel up to this point is the ability to use objects as pins. So as you know, inside of Clothworks, um, one of the things that we do a lot of is we use pins in order to set objects in place, right? So let's say, for example, that I was to take this object, make it a group, make it a cloth, and then subdivide it to give it some detail. And then use pins in order to hold it in place, right? So now if we simulate this, this is going to be a piece of cloth that's hanging based on those pins. So we do a lot of that inside of Clothworks. However, one of the functions that I haven't really talked about is there's also the ability to use an object as a pin. And so the way that works is let's say that we create a simple shape like this one. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the top and I'm going to make it into a group. We're going to delete out the bottom and then real quick we're just going to add some detail in here. So I'm just going to use the move tool in copy mode and do a divided by and we'll say 20 for right now. And that's just going to be to divide this whole thing up to give it more detail for the cloth modifier to actually work. But then we're going to take all of that and triple click on it and we're going to make that a group as well. And so for that group, we're going to make that a cloth. And so notice how right now, if we just hit play, it's just going to fall out of our scene, right? And the reason for that is because it's not hanging from anything. Well, there's an option in here for a group to make it a pin. So if I right click on this group and I click on make pin, that's going to make this a pin inside of Clothworks. However, notice how if I click the play button, it's still not going to work. And so the reason it's not going to work is because the way this works is the pin group makes anything that's inside of the bounding box a pin. So any vertices that are inside of the bounding box of the group becomes a pin. Well, right now, this is flat. So nothing's inside of this group. So what we want to do is we just want to come in here and we just want to extrude this up and down like this. Well, notice how what that does is this gives us a blue bounding box that's got some thickness to it. Well, now if I move this down like this, remember this object is a pin. Well, now if I click on play, notice how this is hanging in place, right? And the reason that it's hanging in place is because all of the vertices of this cloth are inside of this bounding box. And so one thing that you might do is let's say that you wanted this to be a bounding box, but you didn't really want this to show up. So what you could do is you could triple, triple click on all of this and hide it. And then you could just make like a little intersection point with a couple lines like this. So now you can see it you can see your bounding box and you can move it around, but you don't have that kind of ugly geometry on the top of this object like this. So once we understand how that works, that gives us some really interesting ideas for some different things that we can do. So first off, remember that since these are pins or since this object is a pin, you can actually move it around, right? So it's gonna act the same way as the individual pins that you have inside of your cloth simulation and I haven't set this up with self collision so obviously this whole thing's a little bit messed up but you can use this in order to move those pins around so you could also do something really interesting with an extension like Curvaloft from Fredo 6 so Curvaloft is basically designed to let you create complex skins inside of SketchUp so one thing you could do is let's say we had a series of arcs in here like this and I'm going to move them a little ways apart. So let's say we had three of these and let's say we wanted to drape cl cloth across them. Well, what you could do is you could select them. 
you could use the loft by spline function in here in order to create a skin. And remember that Clothworks needs a lot of geometry to function. So one thing we might do before we do that is we might increase the number of segments on these. So instead of having 12, maybe we would bump them up to 36. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna create more geometry in here when we create our copies. But now we could use curve loft to create the skin. We could use the uh, number of segments to add some detail in here. And then we could create a face. That face is gonna work perfectly as a cloth. And so what we might do in this situation is for each one of these, we might just fill this in and make it an object like this, but then we can right click and make it a group. We can right click and make it a pin. And we can move it over a little bit so that it's actually aligned with these points. And so now if we do that, remember that these are pins, we can use Clothworks in order to simulate a cloth that's hung over these pieces. And that's gonna work a lot better if I actually make that object a cloth. And so notice how what that's doing is that's got a pin across these objects, but then the cloth in here is going to hang down. And so another cool thing that you could do about that or do with that if you wanted to, and so you could adjust things like your gravity or you can make some changes to your bend in order to kind of fine tune what that cloth is going to do. And so that actually opens up a lot of interesting possibilities for things like suspended cloth as well. So for example, let's say that we were to do something like our little windsock looking thing right here. So what we could do is we could draw a big circle and then I'm just gonna make a copy of it right above. I'm gonna scale that in a little bit and then make another copy up here and scale that in as well using the scale tool. And let's go ahead and bump up the segment counts on these to maybe like 48, just so we'll have a little bit more detail. But we could use curve aloft, curve aloft and loft by spline in order to create a surface across these. Well then, we could bump up the number of segments, create the surface, and then we could make these two objects into pins. So we could do the same thing, where we make sure that all these vertices would show up inside of that bounding box, but we could make this a pin And we need to remember to make this a cloth. But we could simulate this where this cloth hangs down. And then if we wanted to, we could also, and I'm gonna hide this for a second. I'm gonna scale this out just a bit so we can be sure that it's gonna pick everything up, but we could make this a group as well. We could make that a pin. Then we'll unhide our cloth here. Remember that's just gonna pin all the vertices in this location. And we could go ahead and hide this. We could hide this as well. But then we can simulate this and it's gonna be like we draped a cloth over something like a frame right here. So using objects as pins isn't something that I knew about up until very recently. So I'm definitely going to be testing this out more. I think there's a lot of fun applications that we can use this for, but leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. If you're using Clothworks, if you knew about this function, I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, so make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.